talk about writing for a second. Uh, people ask me from time to time, like, what's your schedule? Do you sit down? How do you do it? Um, for people that have never done it, and they're like, that sounds fun. I would like to make stuff up as well. <laughs> what is, what's the, do you have a schedule? Or I, when people ask me, I tell them, like, I, you can't stop me from writing when I want to write something, because it's just joy. Like, I'd rather be writing than doing anything else. Somebody was just like, yeah, right, you'd rather write than fuck? I was like, yeah, that's what makes me an artist, motherfucker. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, so I don't know that I'd go that far. <laughs> 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 that's that's an extreme uh, sentiment there. <laughs> You're like, look, winter ain't the only thing coming in yeah. my house. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, what how, how do you go about it? Do you like uh, do you and, and I'm talking about the early days, not now. Did you like I'm gonna set aside time, especially in a world where you had a job. Most people maybe listen would be people who are like, oh, I would like to do that, but I also have a job. How did you balance real life and fantasy? Well, it, it's been difficult, and, and the answer to that really varies as to what time uh, in my life you're talking about and what, what was my, my position and my obligations and my living situation at that particular time. Um, I, I have friends uh, who uh, I occasionally hate because they have this gift, who can write anywhere and any time. I have friends who write, uh, you know, four pages a day, no matter where they are. They, they, if they're traveling, they write four pages on the airplane. If they're in a hotel, they write four pages there. They, four pages every day, 365 days a year. They write, they write, they write. They can turn it on, they can turn it off. I have friends who can juggle multiple projects at one time. Uh, I have a one uh, a screenwriter friend, dear friend, back in uh, New Mexico where I live. She can work on a, a novel in the morning and a screenplay in the afternoon and a short story in the evening. Three different projects in one day. She works on all of them. I can't do any of that shit. <laughs> I, when I'm writing, when it's working for me, I, d I don't want to be disturbed. I can't write. I have tried. I cannot write on trains, ships, airplanes. I cannot write in weird-ass hotel rooms. I... I, I even can't write at home if I'm going to be interrupted. I want to be left alone. Just me and the computer these days or the typewriter in the old days and don't bother me. And um, um, it's always been that way. And I, I can't say even that writing is a joy. I, there are joyful days when, you know, when it really comes alive and the, the characters are coming alive and the scene and the words are pouring out of you feels good. But there, there are not a lot of those days. There are also days where it's hard. <laughs> and you know, and I sit down and I read what I wrote yesterday and I say, this is shit. Why am I pretending I can do this? This is terrible. And I wind up rewriting the whole thing. And uh, you know, and I do that for several days and then I go to my wife and say, Where's my talent? What did you do with my talent? Did you put it somewhere else? <laughs> I can't find it anymore. <laughs> but then Smart I have a good man day. blames his wife, just like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then I have a good day. Um, so there's usually a rush. I haven't felt this in a long time because, as some of you may know, uh, A Song of Ice and Fire is not finished. I have two more books to write. <laughs> but. We weren't going to talk about that, by the way. I, I promised this would be the one place that people weren't going to ask about that book. But I'll tell you, man, everyone gets on your dick about finishing the book. I say this proves what an amazing lover you must be. Because you, <laughs> you make shit last, George. Like, you're just edging us all with that last book. I like that. Good explanation. Yes. I'm going to steal that. Um, tell Colbert that shit. No, when... When I'm writing a short story, which I did predominantly when I started, or even a novelette, a novella, and eventually I got onto novels, there, there comes a point where the end is in sight, you know, where, where I've crested, and suddenly I, I, I pick up speed, or historically I did this. I'm talking now 70s, the 80s, the 90s. 
Maybe I've been writing like a page and a half a day, but suddenly I find I'm writing three pages a day. I'm writing four pages a day, and God, on that last day I wrote ten pages, and they're pretty damn good, and then I get to write the end, and that's the climax. Um, but when you're writing a novel, it, it doesn't come quite as often, and when you're writing this gigantic seven-volume kind of thing, uh, I really want to get to that point where I can finish it and it'll be done and God, that will feel good for at least a day until I reread it the next day and decide it's all <laughs> shit. But, yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, in, there are writers who love the simple act of writing and there are other writers, and I probably fall more on this, who love having written. Um, it's great when it's done and when it's not done you know you struggle what whether you could ever really really do it um, one of the things back in high school and grade school when I was writing my space encyclopedia and Turtle Castle and all that and even a little later that when I was writing stories is a lot of them were not never finished um, because I don't know, you, you go through this, in your head, you can see the story, you know what the story is, and, and God, it's, it's beautiful, it's like a platonic ideal, it's a shimmering, wonderful story, and it's moving, and it's poetic, and it's true, and it's going to be the greatest story ever told, and then you sit down there with the typewriter, and you're trying to write it, and it's not as good as it was in your head, and you're struggling with it, and... You know, I would get like 10 pages into one of these stories and it just seems worse and worse. And then I'd get a different idea for a story which would be shimmering and beautiful and poetic. And I would put the first story aside and I'd start writing a second story. And then I'd abandon that too after a point. I'm going way back to my childhood with, you know, to my very early days with that. But then I bought a, um, a book of interviews with famous science fiction writers and all that and there was a piece by Robert A. Heinlein in there, and uh, he had his, uh, I think, uh, four rules, five rules for being a successful writer. And his first rule was, you must write, <laughs> which seems pretty basic, but I, I meet a lot of people who want to be writers, but they never get around to writing, you know? Um, so you must write, that's the first one. And his second rule, which is the one that really impacted on me, you must finish what you write. <laughs> and I'm still dealing with that all these decades later, but it did inspire me at the time. I said, okay, the short story is not the greatest short story in the history of Western literature like I wanted it to be when I started, but I'm going to finish the fucker anyway and send it out and um, make myself do that. Heinlein's second rule, and that made a huge difference in my life and my career.